Howdy. Let me see if I can go full screen on this. Will that will that work? I guess that will work. So, anyways, let's see if I can do this. So, it says draw a complete force diagram for the 10 kilogram block sitting on a table before Mr. Morrison began to push or pull on it. Um, what we have over here, will this work? I guess it will. What we have over here, and this one is the force acceleration velocity and position graphs for me actually doing it pulling something this 10 kilogram block and the other one is for um, the computer simulation so anyways I hope you know that so the force diagram would look a little bit like this you have the force the, the force of gravity down and the force of gravity is always mass times gravity and if I was just to see a, an object just sitting there with the gravity down, I would assume that it's falling. But it's not falling, it's just sitting on the table. So we, there must be another force up, and so that must be the normal force. And whatever this turns out to be, this is actually pretty easy because this is 10 kilograms times a negative 9.8 uh, newtons per kilogram. And so whatever that turns out to be, this is going to be the opposite of it. So the normal force in this case will be a positive 980. And you got you just got to remember that if an object isn't falling, then it's going to have, you have to have a support force. And the support force in this case, in any case, is going to be the same as the gravity, but the force of gravity, not, not the same as 9.8, which is the common mistake. So um, how do I get back to uh, this guy, the mouse, and can I scroll up? I can scroll up. Okay. So now what we have is we have these questions for each one of these segments, what's going to happen. And so in the first segment, where my pen go now? In the first, where'd the pen go? Um... So in the first segment, um, in which is number one, which is this segment here, this is one. It, I'm just sitting there, not moving, no force, and um, no acceleration. Here in the second segment, you can see that there's a force on it, a positive acceleration, so the velocity increases. In the third segment, uh, it's constant velocity. The force is... Um, I'll show the force in a second. In the fourth segment, I'm slowing down. In the fifth segment, I'm stopped. So the forces on, on this side here are the same exact idea as in the one on the right. So let's go and uh, go ahead and take a look at each scenario. So in the first scenario, uh, it's asking what's happening. And it's Newton's first law. And the object is not even being pushed and so basically you have up and down but you have no sideways and so this is the idea of an object of motion stays in motion an object at rest stays at rest and so this one is at rest so if it's at rest its velocity will just stay um, the second one the second scenario is Newton's second law because it's going to accelerate so you have the up and down are still the same but now you have a rightward force, which is bigger than the friction. And so the, the way it's going to accelerate is going to be equal to the net force over the mass. And that's Newton's second law. In the third one, the object is now going at a constant velocity. So that's back to Newton's first law. And in this case, the, the force diagrams will actually balance and so that is balanced. And so if it's balanced, then there is no acceleration. If it's no acceleration, then um, this is an object in motion, stays in motion. And so it's already moving. So we just stay moving the same exact speed. Uh, the next one is back to Newton's second law, because this time the force of friction or the brakes, whatever, is going to slow it down. So the acceleration will actually be to the left. And so because the net force here is to the left, 
then the acceleration will be to the left. In the previous case, the, the net force is to the right, which is positive. That doesn't look like a positive. So the, the um, acceleration is to the right. This is negative, so it's slowing down. And the last one is actually back to Newton's first law. And once again, it's at rest. And uh, you may be thinking, Mr. Morrison, you didn't give us any examples of Newton's third law. That's naughty. Yeah, I did not give any examples of Newton's third law in that case, because the Newton's third law is actually on the back of the page. So now it says calculate the acceleration. And when you calculate the acceleration, um, A is A is always equal to the net force over the mass. And the net force is going to be uh, Mr. Morrison pushed the block with 100 newtons of force. That's my force to the right. And then I'm going to push it. Uh, the friction is to the left. And so that's negative. And you can either say minus 20 or you can say plus a negative 20. It doesn't matter. It just says it just says it's to the left. And the mass, of course, was 10 kilograms. And so what we get is basically 100 minus 20 is 80 over 10. And so 80 over 10 will give us 8 meters per second squared. Then it says, how far will you go? Well, that hopefully at this point, you know how to do how far. And how far is this question, delta x? And the delta x equation uh, goes back to unit 1. Is there something on my nose there? What is that? Um, the delta x equation goes back to unit 1. And basically, it says xf, which is my final location, will be equal to 1 half times my acceleration times my time squared. Plus, if I was going with initial velocity, um, in this case, um, in this case, I, I'm not talking about initial velocity. So that will be zero times my time. And it, whatever my initial position was. And in this case, let's call our initial position zero. Let's call our initial velocity zero. And so um, the, the right two parts um, will actually be canceled, right? So these two parts on this side, what the heck just happened there? These two parts on this side, we can just cancel those out because they're going to be zero. Okay, go back to my red pen. All right, so that's the end of that question. So explain whether a rocket or airplane could accelerate out in space. So Newton's third law, really what we want to talk about here is precisely Newton's third law, which is for every force, there is an equal but opposite force. And because the airplane has what's called propellant, um, Oh, sorry, a propeller. Um, it has nothing to push in space. So propellers don't work out in space. But a rocket carries propellant. And propellant is rocket fuel. Um, just like, um, what's his name? Check mark. Just like uh, Iron Man. Um, Mark Watney was able to fly with his suit by poking a hole in his suit that gave him a form of propellant and it wasn't rocket fuel um, it was compressed air but that was a form of propellant and he was able to to move otherwise he would have been stuck in space and unable to move because he couldn't push off of anything he could push off the spaceship and that would have started him going toward the other spaceship um and i think he kind of did he kind of like he kind of pulled down the spaceship and kind of pushed away from it and then psh, i don't know i can't remember that scene actually <laughs> come to think of it but anyways, um, Newton's first law, Newton's third law, says you have to push off of something. So airplane can't push off of anything because there's no air in space, whereas a rocket brings propellant. Um, so with a rocket, the idea is the rock. I got the rocket here, right? And the fire is going out the back, and so that's your force of the propellant going out the back, and that makes the rocket go forward and by the way that should be equal to that because newton's third law says for every force this is an equal but opposite force newton's second law that's newton's second law right there says that they're um they're not going to accelerate the same and in fact the plane can't accelerate because it can't push on anything so uh, going back to the acceleration equation um, acceleration is due to a net force 
over mass. And the plane, the plane have any propeller, uh, can't generate a force. And so without a force, it just sits there. But the rocket can accelerate. And this is going to be the, the force of the, of the rockets, right? Force FR and divided by the mass of the rocket. And so that will be able to accelerate. Um, speed up, slow down, depends on what direction it's, it's shooting the rockets. Okay, um, let's see, continuing on. That was weird, the, the rocket kind of stayed in one place. Uh, okay, Newton's first law. Newton's first law is pertaining to the plane. It just would say an object at rest. So the plane is at rest, and it's going to stay at rest. The rocket, um, let's consider if the rocket ran out of fuel. If the rocket ran out of fuel, um, Newton's first law would apply, because it would just travel through space and it never slowing down. And so um, the rocket can be either at rest, just sitting there, with no rockets, it would just sit. And if it um, applied the rockets until it ran out of fuel, then it would just move. And so once again, Newton's first law, an object at rest stays at rest, an object in motion stays in motion. So the rocket might stay in motion, right? Um, maybe it stays in motion as it goes through space at a constant speed. Okay, and then on to the last one. And we have mom and daughter. And so um, once again, this is Newton's third law. And so if the mom is pushing the daughter with 200 Newtons, right, that way, then there'll also be 200 Newtons that way. And that is Newton's third law. Um, that's Newton's right there. I'm not sure what that looks like. And But now you can really start to understand it if you separate those because the mom and the daughter are actually going to be separate. If they hold hands, if they hold on to each other forcefully and mom pushes daughter, guess what? They won't go anywhere. They'll just kind of like push against each other and just sit there on the ice. They have to push and let go. And once they push and let go, there'll be two masses. So I'll have a, ma a mass here, right? That will be a mass. And I'll have another mass here that will be separate. So in order to move, you actually have to push and then kind of let go. Like if, if your feet were attached to the earth and you were trying to walk, you know, could you walk? If, if I nailed your shoes to the ground, um, could you walk? No, you actually have to push off of the ground in order to move. So that's what this gets to. So the acceleration of the mom will be the same force as above but the the mass is bigger so mom's mass is um is bigger and the acceleration of the daughter is the same force right uh that's the that's the force maybe of the mom and that's the force of the daughter but it's the same force they're both 200 and the mass of the daughter is much lighter all right so this ratio at the bottom this last question is basically, and I think it's as far down as I can go, uh, this last question is basically saying, what's the ratio? So if something is 10 times as heavy, so if something is 10 times as heavy, it's going to accelerate at one-tenth. All right? Uh, the mom is twice as heavy. So she's going to accelerate at one-half. The daughter is half as heavy. So she's going to accelerate twice as much. And so it's a it's basically a, a, an inverse function. And the reason it's inverse, an inverse function is because acceleration and mass are inversely proportional. And that's what that little thing right there says. Acceleration and mass are inversely proportional. The greater the mass, the lesser it's your, it's your proportionality thumbs, right? So the greater the mass the less the acceleration and the less the mass the greater the acceleration so my thumbs are inverted and so uh, that's basically what that problem is saying and that is a messy and a quickie version of the um, unit summary if i can get out of here now all right sayonara